I think last night was exciting, obviously. Uh, I think the first thing we're here in Los Angeles, uh, let's say the capital of the electric car market. The second thing, we did a global premiere, world premiere here in Los Angeles. And the third one is just the concept uh, behind me. You know, I think it marries a lot of things Americans are looking for. It's got the ride height that they like. It's got tremendous space. Yet it comes in what I call a new world package. Extremely aerodynamic, coupe-like styling, gives you the long range that you need with an electric car. And frankly, the car just looks absolutely, absolutely stunning. So yeah, I was excited last night and still am. It's got a little glow, feel it coming from behind me there. You can't just uh, put your, uh, let's say, toe in the water. You have to go all in. And by all in, obviously, we have the MEB platform. This is leading to three cars that we'll be bringing to this market, potentially more. Uh, you know the ASUV is coming. Of course, you see the vehicle behind me. Some version of that will certainly come and the famous ID Buzz. So you have the platform, you have the products. You also need the manufacturing. We just broke ground last week in Chattanooga where we will be building the ASUV. This car will be imported, but it'll be localized in 2022. So we have a lot of work to do. The other part is the commitment to CO2. We want to be CO2 zero or CO2 neutral by 2050. This has big ramifications on our ports. This has ramifications on our factories, where we get our energy from. And these are all things we're working on. So it's, uh, it's quite an endeavor, something I'm proud to be part of. As we look at what's happening, look, this is a topic of conversation, not just electrification, but I would say climate change and the ramifications of that. And we see a lot of consumers now, they're looking at companies and they're saying, what side of the fence are you on? Where does your company stand? And they're making buying decisions accordingly. We're seeing this in fast food, we're seeing it in jeans, and we're certainly seeing it with automobiles. And if we look at younger demographics, it's uh, even more so with millennials in terms of they want companies that stand by them and stand how they want to live their life. And that's where we are. We're positioning ourselves there, uh, but we're doing it in a true, authentic way <laughs> with our stance, with our investments, with the real products, not a uh, marketing brush over, if you will. That's the magic of this platform. You know, when this platform scales up, you know, we could build upwards of 20 million cars on this platform. So this is what helps having a strong presence in China, strong presence in Europe. It also helps to have the flexibility. And this is what allows us to do things like a buggy, uh, which we've showed, of course, in the States, to something you see behind me, to the mythical buzz. And that's uh, a beautiful thing. You get the scaling effects of the platform, yet you can get all the diversity of products from it as well. To me, in America is huge. Obviously, being an American, uh, having the responsibility of leading this wonderful brand here in America, uh, mm -hmm. the first US executive to lead the brand in over a quarter of a century, uh, and to be able to make these investments and to be able to go down that plant and uh, see the Americans working in that plant, to see new technology such as the battery production, which we'll be doing in Tennessee, uh, to meet the governor and look at all of his efforts uh, for job training and future skilling the plant, uh, it puts a smile on my face. It's a huge thing. Uh, look, everyone in life wants to leave a mark, whatever that mark is. And to have a legacy that would bring this innovation and these jobs to America, not bad. Education is huge. You know, my perspective is probably 90% of it, 95% of America has never driven or been in an electric car. So this is a massive opportunity. What I know, if you get trial, uh, uh, you actually get a tremendous reaction. There's still people who believe, uh, can we drive these cars in the rain? <laughs> can they get more than 50 miles of range? And on these, all these misperceptions. And once you get someone in it, it works. But for me, the best way to make that happen is what we did last week. We had 800 of our dealers uh, down in Chattanooga. We introduced our entire electric portfolio. That is the way that you can get electrification into the community. Community, community, zip code by zip code with the dealers. They're on board. They will be training. They will be doing the test drives. They will get the trust buildup that's needed. And it's going to be a process, but one I'm excited to implement. I think if you look at this stage, it pretty much uh, sums it up. Uh, you look at the past, uh, I can remember being raised in a Volkswagen Beetle, not exactly a Baja one. Uh, of course, you look at the current, and these are the big investments. Uh, the car behind me, the Atlas Crossboard, is ramping up down in Tennessee as we speak. And then, of course, you see the future. And to be able to represent this and drive this, uh, this is just not one of those who cares commodity businesses. This has a massive impact on communities, massive impact on people's lives, and I couldn't be prouder than to be here. For USMCA, we as Volkswagen are ready to go. Uh, we've submitted our plans uh, to the trade uh, authorities, to the government. We have a very thorough plan. Of course, this is going to cause a lot of rework in terms of suppliers. Which suppliers are we going to relocate? Of course, you know the labor value content and all these decisions. But we've put a methodical plan in place. We are ready to execute. We are already speaking to our supply base about relocating uh, uh, different factories and, and different production things. So we are ready to go. The government will decide as the 
government decides, as you know. And sometimes it's slow and sometimes it's fast. It's always mercurial, and, uh, but we're ready regardless. In the automotive business, we're not responsible for trade agreements. Uh, we are responsible for operating within trade agreements. So yeah, I do feel confident uh, that the Europeans and the American government will uh, handle it accordingly. What we are able to deal with, look, we've made the smart investments and we'll continue to make those smart investments, whether it's down in Tennessee or whether it's at other facilities uh, across America. We will operate within the guidelines as they are there. But yes, I also believe if you look at the ecosystem as it exists, it's never been larger, the U.S. automotive market, Profitability is relatively good. Dealer profitability is relatively good. But the true source, honestly, is the American consumer. In my mind, the American consumer has never had access to better cars with more technology at more competitive pricing. So I think the ecosystem works, and let's make whatever modifications or changes uh, need to be made. But again, we don't set uh, tariffs. We don't set trade agreements. We operate within them, and that's what we'll continue to do. I feel good about the year. We're up 3.7% uh, so far in a market that's down. I think the market's been gaining a little bit of momentum uh, in the fall, which is always good. Uh, we're closing out with our November and December uh, sales event, and uh, optimism amongst the dealers is quite good. Next year, I feel optimistic. I think as an overall market, I think it'll probably continue to be slightly down, but again, these are still very high levels. 16.8, 16.7 million units is still a very high level. For us, of course, we'll have two all new products hitting the market, which always helps. We have the cross port, which is behind me, and of course we have the Passat. These are two high volume vehicles, brand new next year. So I feel confident that we'll continue to grow uh, at Volkswagen, which we need to do.